It all starts with a question. Did Buffy and Giles use the Dewey Decimal System to fight evil? I'm Peter, and this is Stacks and Facts. You know how it goes. One chilly October night, you're out late doing patrols in the local cemetery when, as if it was the most natural thing possible, you start casually singing about how life just seems to be a dull world of monotony and how nothing really stirs your heart anymore. As you're singing, you stumble upon a horror shop quartet of spooky spooks and a half-hearted fight ensues. One of the baddies mentions that you just ain't got that swing anymore, and so you start staking them in the middle of their song and dance routine. You finish the big bad baddie with a sword through the heart, but still, it feels like you're just going through the motions or walking through the part. Nothing seems to penetrate your heart. Now, the next morning, you meet up with the gang in the local magic shop, naturally your headquarters, and it casually comes up that you're not the only one who happened to burst into song last night. And so, while you've all got a theory of what might be going on, some of which are more likely than others, the ex-librarian among you and owner of the shop decides that it bears more research. We'll call him Giles. After all, while some of you might like the idea of belting out power ballads in the middle of math class, mostly you don't think it's very bunny. Funny. I meant funny. So the team splits up. Some of you might head to the local university library to start searching the stacks for facts, but more likely you're going to consult Giles' own collection. After all, he just happens to be also a member of a secret organization, the Watcher's Council, tasked with protecting mankind from demons and fun, so his collection is as good a place as any to start at. Now, the question arises, how do you actually find anything? Like most universities, UC Sunnydale's library probably uses the Library of Congress, or LOC, classification system, but realistically, given the scenario we're confronted with, the Watcher's Council probably didn't. For one, the Watcher's Council is headquartered in Great Britain. If we look at the British Library, they use the 23rd edition of the Dewey Decimal Classification System, uh, or we'll just call it Dewey. That's not to say that if we look at other institutions around the world, LOC isn't used. Here at UBC, in uh, beautiful British Columbia, our libraries use LOC instead of Dewey, but the US and Canada also share a continent and a number of cultural aspects. Secondly, according to lore, the Watchers have existed almost since prehistory. As such, they probably figured out their own system of knowledge organization well before 1897, when LOC first came to be, and before 1882, when the cutter system that the LOC was based on came around, or even before 1876, when Dewey first published a pamphlet that introduced his newfangled decimal system. So what might the WCCS, or as I like to call it, the Watcher's Council classification system look like? Well, it depends on what they're categorizing. Here are a few things that Watchers might concern themselves with. Now, it's quite a broad sample, but let's face it, saving the world from evil powers isn't easy, and people tend to die, sometimes more than once. So to start, maybe they decide to categorize things by how much of a threat a thing is to humanity. In this case, maybe they'll have three big categories. Potential Armageddon, could wipe out a city, and a threat to individuals. And just to be safe, there's a fourth category, everything else. In that case, we may have something like this, where gods and multinational corporations are potentially world-ending, whereas a revenge demon and the Santa Claus might just end an individual's life. Of course, this scheme relies on knowing how dangerous a thing is already. But if you don't know, maybe you'll want a different scheme. Something like this might serve the Watchers better when details are still hazy. You could still take something like this and divide it even more. It might make sense to group heaven and hell together under a subcategory afterlife, or perhaps group vampires, mummies, and zombies in the subcategory undead. Ultimately, the classification system is going to reflect the needs of the organization that uses it. And who knows, they could use more than one. Now, these are all examples of taxonomies, or classification systems used to organize information according to some set of rules or attributes. A taxonomy typically develops around an organization's needs or purpose. In this case, the defense against mankind against all kinds of supernatural stuff. This can be in the form of a hierarchical classification, where a revenge demon falls under demons more broadly, which in turn falls under enemies as a high-level category. Or they can take the form of faceted classification, where the topics are connected by their relationships to other things. Say, ghosts are immune to axes, or ghosts reside in real estate, in this case, there might be other things that ghosts are immune to, for example, stakes. There are also other things that are immune to axes, like multinational corporations, for example. This ends up making multinational corporations and ghosts related, which might sound a little weird to you and me, but might make perfect sense to the watchers. And let's be real, 
Don't you ever get the feeling when you're all alone at home in the dead of night, sitting on your computer, that maybe something's watching you? Who's to say it's a ghost and not Facebook? Hmm? So as for whether or not Buffy and Giles use Dewey, I'm just gonna say probably not. I mean, they could, someone could get creative and probably fit all of those topics in there somewhere. But I think broadly, and you can see this if you check out each of the sections in the Wikipedia article on it, there are wide swaths of Dewey that just aren't relevant. And when time is of the essence, and you really just gotta know why some customers just start combusting, or who gave Nero his very first fiddle, you want answers as soon as possible. And Google ain't gonna cut it. So that's it for this episode of Stacks and Facts. Now, I would just like to say that if you're under my spell, then how else can it be that you are not subscribed to me? You know I research well, I read too many books, and live at university. You make me complete. Ah, uh, well, this is awkward, so thanks for checking me out. And until next time, don't, don't forget to ask questions. Okay, uh, bye. <laughs>